Nathan Gong, it's great to have you on The Setting Trick. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> Nathan is 16 years old, a junior in high school. Yeah. And uh, was recently featured in the October Bridge Bulletin, uh, talking about all his uh, exploits as a uh, ambassador for Bridge. And I know Nathan because you reached out to me uh, a couple years ago about Double Dummy because you wanted to uh, show uh, the film. Uh, let's go back to, uh, by the way, for those who are not watching, Nathan is very sweetly holding his iPod or I, like uh, microphone on his headset to his to his mouth that's how like he is wanting to do well i think you can probably why don't you try just letting it hang and see if that uh i think it'll be i think it'll be just as good man okay how's it sound it's not as good you're right <laughs> i knew it i knew it <laughs> <laughs> oh man so uh anyway nathan uh, I was going back to uh, I was going back through my emails um, yesterday in preparation for this conversation, and I was kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that? I mean, no wonder nobody's watched Double Dummy. Like I was like, you know, I got this kid, fourteen years old at the time, you know, coming in wanting to show it. I'm like, you know, bending him over, trying to. I mean. I was I was a little I was a little I was a little embarrassed to to to, 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 to read to read the, to read my interactions with you, man. So uh, I'm glad we're friends now. You know, like uh, I'm you know fired up to have you here on the uh, on the podcast. Thanks. Yeah. Well. Okay. I, I, I'll be honest. When I first I when I was when I first called you, I I remember my dad tried to get. Uh, tried to get double dummy, but you thought it was too suspicious. So he he, it was his idea to send a little kid to avoid suspicion and to try to get the movie shown to uh some other people. And uh, honestly, I was like, uh, I was there from the beginning. Like I watched like the soft launch, and I was gonna give feedback, but I didn't know how. So I was like a super fan. So what? what <laughs> When, when, no matter how you communicate to me, I didn't really matter because as long as I could secure Double Dummy, I thought it was amazing. And I could talk to, you know, the director of what I thought to be like this amazing movie. So, oh man. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. I really appreciate it. That means a lot. Thank you. I'm so glad I brought that up. <laughs> like, uh, um, and now here you are, you know, like uh, a couple years later, you're playing in the same event. <laughs> you're playing on USA One. You know, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. It it was a long long road. So uh, I, I'll be honest. I actually started Bridge because of uh, my jealousy towards my brother. So <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> so so th this starts like seven years ago when uh we we are just uh getting pretty good into chess and uh yeah. my dad hires this grandmaster but things aren't going so well so he, he wants us wait your dad is a chess grandmaster <laughs> no no he he hires like this oh. like local pro and got it and he's he thinks like we're learning nothing and we're not really doing much because he doesn't really understand the game. But what he, what he does understand is bridge. And when I first started, when I first started into the game, we went to this summer camp. Uh, it was the same summer camp that I help teach at now, Bridge for Youth. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I thought it was interesting, but I, I was kind of bored because I was just sitting there for hours at a time and. I had to think about so much and I didn't really understand a lot of it and I was very confused. But then like six, six years ago, my brother and my dad just started going 
into these random places and they kept <laughs> talking about this bridge game and they kept talking about the results that they have <laughs> and my dad would credit my brother as some kind of genius that keeps, <laughs> keeps carrying him in the game this uh. prodigal bridge player so <laughs> me being the older brother i had to one-up him so then i started taking up the game and well uh i think it was uh 2019 where uh pre-covid uh my brother had gone to the the u.s team for that year and then i was i was uh i was like wow you could you could actually like go so many places and you know you could just play wherever you want so i that's like during covid and pre-covid is when i like started to really get serious into the game and brought me here and so your brother is getting into it with your dad your dad thinks your brother's a genius and your brother's tell us about your brother your brother's name uh, is arthur and he's he's 14 he's two years younger than you yeah so at the time he was like eight years old and he was like <laughs> half the size i was <laughs> Uh, is it just the two of you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and your dad is a like, your dad had he played bridge before you went to this camp or? Uh, yeah, he he started learning in a uh, college, and he actually played with my grandpa who, uh, lives with us. Oh, okay. And did they? Did did your dad and grandfather still both still play? Uh, my grandpa not so much, but. Uh, my dad definitely is uh, an active bridge player. And is he a life master? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you're a life master? Uh, yeah. All three of us are in the life ma are life masters now. Got it. Um, this so this conversation is taking place on October twentieth. Are you gonna go to uh, Atlanta for the fall in NABC at all? Yeah, for sure. And uh, we're actually bringing uh, some of the kids from the magazine they're also coming to join us oh really yeah so this article in the magazine uh tell us tell us a little bit about that tell us about the kids that are coming to atlanta and how did you find out that they were going to interview you for the bridge bulletin well uh so i guess we'll start with how i met the kids so this was a, a lot due to my dad because uh before then we had already done like a prototype of that we started a uh, one basement like program before these kids which included uh borrowing uh using double dummy as like a promotional device and uh, uh we thought that was a pretty good success and uh we wanted to get a uh, more younger fresher minds so uh my dad just got a lot of these uh people that he thought would be interested into the game mainly he got it through their parents who convinced their kids to join and then uh yeah the rest kind of just fell into place like everybody just most of the kids like really got into the game and now they're just amazing and um when you say amazing what do you mean amazing like they're like super dedicated like mm. there's a pair right now uh that like is consistently they have usbf training they have uh practice with us and they also play speed balls by themselves and they often are asking me questions and wanting to post more on the boards mm. that's the best isn't it when you got somebody who like really really get is getting into it and they want to ask questions yeah <laughs> oh and uh i think i think it's actually much funnier the story of how how i this interview and this article came to life so okay. so th this was like just after chicago and we we've had a a pretty not good week of bridge but uh, this is the chicago nationals this summer uh in, yeah yeah at the chicago nationals and this is the last day so we're already uh depressed and we have the world youth championships in a couple of days and yeah we, we we're just like whatever we're gonna take the day off and go to the 
Chicago Art Institute. So out out of the blue, like my my brother spots that my mom is texting uh, Amy Casanova since we were uh, pretty close with Amy who wrote up the article. And yeah. she she was like, like all she was doing was advertising me and like the volunteering thing so I could get an article on the bulletin. And I was very, very, very uh, embarrassed. And all I wanted to do was like retra- retract what my mom said and be like, you know, Amy, you don't have to do all of this. <laughs> Wait, your mom was the one that was advertising you as a volunteer? So, yeah, like our family was pretty close with Amy. So, like out yeah. of the blue, my mom just texted Amy and was like, hey, so do you want to write an article about my so- <laughs> about Nathan and his volunteering with these kids that went to the <laughs> Chicago <laughs> Youth Nationals? <laughs> You didn't play in the youth NABC, did you? Uh, okay, so I I played like, so after uh, the Roth, uh, we got unfortunately we didn't make it to day two, so we actually could play the team championship, and we were leading until the last round, but then I felt very <laughs> sick, so it was not good. But did you play the last round sick? Uh, yeah. Wow, who'd you lose to? Um, we lost to, uh. I don't remember, but I think it was Nicole Chen, uh, who's on the Rona team, uh, Matthew Riffin, and two Canadians. But actually, yeah, and I, it, it actually wasn't uh, the, them. They, they didn't win. Like, we beat them in the previous round, but right. because the, uh, the boards were so short and there was, like, so little competition, they just – another team just – came from behind and uh they beat us up so then they right. let them capital ahead right right so that was rough yeah apologies to our teammates by the way jack bogey and avery silverstein if you're listening to this oh wow they were your teammates in the, in the youth <laughs> NBC. yeah it's not i thought you were gonna tell me they were like kids from uh the Seattle program, not like like you know, they won the whatever the uh, GNT Flight C. Yeah, no, no, we we had like we were like coming into that into that thing just prete- just assuming that we were gonna win. So, <laughs> oh. what events are you playing in in Atlanta? So, uh, because I'm a junior now, I I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna skip any of my classes. So I'm gonna only go for my break so I'm gonna take I'm gonna do like the first three national events so like an LM pairs and like something else oh and then the the two-day BAM oh you know who won that yeah I know (laughs) (laughs) um so are you playing with your brother Arthur in that um I I I actually don't know, but I think it's either uh, my dad or my brother. My brother might be playing with his junior, his now junior, like another junior partner or uh, with a Chinese pro, uh, Eve. Who's better, you or Nath- or you or uh, Arthur? Unfortunately, at this moment, I think Arthur's uh, better. Really? Yeah, that that kid just can focus and remember all those cards. Wow. That must be tough. Yeah. It's like Richard and Andrew. I think uh, <laughs> Richard is better than his his two-year-old brother, <laughs> Andrew, also. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's big that you can say that, man. I'm sorry I asked. I thought you I thought I, I was expecting that that was going to be the answer. No, 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 no worries. I I I know I, 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 I was I was almost I don't know I I feel like I've I've accepted it and I I just gotta move <laughs> on now. Um, you so you also I was looking through our text history, um, and you said something really funny. Uh, you said that this was the third most important bridge interview that you've had. That wasn't the funny part. I mean that was kind of funny. <laughs> but, but what was really funny is that you said you said that you rizzed up Osdrey Grant. 
<laughs> that, that sounds that sounds wrong. That sounds wrong out of context. <laughs> I only know what Riz meant. I, I, I only learned learned the phrase Riz like a year ago because Michael Zhu was to calling himself the Riz Lord. Uh. <laughs> Which he's probably going to get pissed at me for saying. <laughs> what does it mean? What does Riz mean? So so it's 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 like uh. It's it's like like using your personality to like convince to impress or convince somebody. Usually, Riz is like referring to uh you get you like getting a like a, a romantic partner. Like you're, yeah, you're just yeah, so yeah. nice. You you yeah. get people, but in this case, it was more. <laughs> it was it was. <laughs> That's why it's funny. That's why it's funny that that's what, you rizzed up Audrey Grant. It was it was an. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an invitation to our podcast which you know was was it was similar to you know like a romantic I- encounter in my opinion you know it was okay it was not it was not the same and i was i was not suggesting a romantic encounter with <laughs> audrey graham but like i was just just ch- trying to like describe <laughs> <laughs> like be, being nice enough that she would she was impressed so tell me what it so, so get, tell us what happened so uh this was also in chicago this was like the first day and yeah i was s- severely jet lagged but uh we need some pra- coming from seattle to chicago that just killed you yeah, okay <laughs> you just couldn't handle it my, my parents <laughs> Were are notoriously cheap, so it was like a 1 a.m. red eye. So I, I slept for like zero hours that day. <laughs> whoa, 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 my parents might hear this. Um, let's let's just say hypothetically there were no other hi- flights available at that time. <laughs> okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I I think like we're pretty tired and we're just practicing so we played like this side game and i i didn't actually recognize that it was audrey grant i just thought it was this really nice person and this partner the partner was also extremely nice and yeah um yeah both both of them were and then uh we played a couple of boards and uh yeah and then afterwards audrey said she was very impressed by my uh demeanor at the table and uh her her partner uh gave us some a bridge magazine uh, no sorry a bridge a bridge comic and at, and with that i uh and and then i like realized it was audrey grant when like she she like gave me her contact info and i was like oh this is who <laughs> I, I was talking to when she invited me on her podcast and i was like wow this is uh this is pretty impressive and <laughs> and uh I convinced her to give me uh one of those uh one of her like c- simplified bidding bidding handouts for free. So how many how many students are there right now that you're like that you're teaching uh Um so there's uh like the the I'm assuming you're talking about the class. So that's like um like three tables, uh, I think like a ta- a table and a half are parents, or like a table. So you're doing a class with your dad, where you're teaching kids and parents together. Uh yeah. And uh, and sorry, and the we're trying to get like a new wave of kids as well. And so tell me why Double Dummy was effective for that. Like you were showing the version that that's on PBS. Yeah. So he's smiling. So, so this was like uh early into the early into the recruitment process where I didn't really know anybody and uh this was like out, outside of the school cuz with the school thing I just got my friends and I told them to spread the word and uh w- I got an interview with James Holtzauer to like try to in like invite people into our club but uh specifically outside i just i thought like double dummy was like a pretty good representation 
and like pretty dramatic for like just a bridge movie and it yeah i think it like could draw people in and we just showed that around to uh get people to sign up would they would you just send them a link where they could watch it or would you they come watch it with you yeah i just like hosted like uh watch parties so like i'd be like mm. and my dad did too at it uh when he was teaching as well would people get up at the end and clap or what uh i i can confirm i showed it to like a bunch of nine-year-olds so halfway <laughs> through the movie they're like sleeping and they're like you know <laughs> we gotta start playing some bridge and in my dad's class, I think some people actually were pretty interested after that. <laughs> I, 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 won't, I won't say if there was a standing ovation or not, but. What do you teach people? Like, what do you teach people? Like, what do you teach a beginner? Um, well, I just, I, I, I like what my dad and me, like, kind of thought about and created, which is a little bit different from other people. We just... I, I actually that's not true. We just focus on like the principles and we focus on like the logic that co goes behind it because if you know the logic it's much easier to remember. So we, we like the rules usually take a while and then we have to get them used to like playing the cards. So maybe we play like whist first, but then mm. after after a while uh I like start talking about the principles I give and then I start giving out like handouts like I give these tables for like easy reference about a situation and with what hand, what do you do? And I give like a list of priorities so they can know what to go through. Will, can, will you share that with me when we're done? So, I mean, if, if you can, yeah. if we can like, if we could share it on the, uh, the website, yeah, sure. You know, that would be cool. So I have a friend, uh, actually a woman that I did some coaching with. She was coaching me like a performance coach and, uh, she, texted me the other day saying that she was playing whist with her kids. Oh. Um, which, uh, I was like, that's great. You know, she, you know, she knows I love bridge. And so, uh, you know, like how, wh how do you do, how do you do whist? Like, how do you, uh, how do you, what's the scoring? What's the deal? What's the Trump? How do you do that? Uh, well, we, we don't really have a scoring method. We just, we just tell them like whoever takes the most amount of tricks will win. And, uh, we kind of introduce like high card points and trumps at the same time. So basically whoever has the most amount of high card points will get to declare the hand and uh, their longest suit will just be considered trump unless they're like 3-3-4-3, three, 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 which then we'll just call no trump. So you, when you say you're playing whist, then you're, there's no dummy? Uh, there, there still is like, uh, we play like modified whist, I guess. Like at at first there's no dummy and then later on we introduce this concept of dummy and it becomes more like uh like hearts i guess i i don't know like it becomes like a uh, playing bridge like just playing the cards but no bidding yeah and are these pre-dealt hands or are you just dealing hands and we're just letting them yeah we're just dealing hands what, uh, how, how many kids do you think are, how many of these kids here, or maybe adults too, that are in this program, do you think are going to come to Atlanta? Um, so let me think. So there's definitely going to be seven, I think, eight ish, um, with four kids and three to four adults. And I think we might expect more, but. I'm not completely sure. I, I think my dad told me who was coming, but it, it may be actually like the whole group of like 12. And are you going to be there like for Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you think like going, I mean like going to Atlanta, like that's a long way for, for, like they're not going to be playing in the national events, are they? They're not going to play. I uh, what 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 we suggested to them wasn't playing like the NABC or NABC Plus events. So more like the limited games, like the four ninety niners and the Gold Rush pairs, to help improve mm. their experience. And your mom, does she play bridge at all? 
No, she can't stand how boring it is. And we've tried to convince her multiple times, but she doesn't budge. But she's still friends with Amy Casanova in spite of, uh, in spite of not being a bridge player. Yeah. So she, she just, she just, she goes to bridge tournaments for the connections and for the experience of like the location, but she never actually touches a card. If we're going to ask Arthur, who's better between you and your dad, who would he say? Um, I, I think he would say me, hopefully, because <laughs> my dad's getting old. <laughs> but your dad was kind of sly. Like, he was working the, the, the kid angle on the film with me, which I'm glad, you know, we've gotten that out. Yeah. Out into the world. Um, so you're a junior. You go to Eastside Prep in, uh, in Seattle. Are you on the tennis team? Uh, yeah, I... I I'm on the tennis team, but our 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 school is kind of small, so like it doesn't it, you don't need any skill to be on the team. Like <laughs> everybody's just a varsity player. You're on varsity tennis. I I saw I was looking you up yesterday. I saw that you you guys played. Uh, I think it was called Seattle Academy. Yeah. In doubles, and you guys, I think you you and your partner lost six one six zero. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, let, let, me, let, me, let me recall that. Um, no, no, the, I, think you're, I think you're talking about the other gong. My brother also played in that match. I, I think I was playing singles, but I'm not sure. Actually, but... Uh, Did you lose singles 6 out 6 one No, 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 no. I, I, I would like <laughs> to say, I would like, before you slander me, I would like to say that I, I'm, I've only lost two matches, okay? And I, I've never really? been owned to owed yet. <laughs> Can you beat your brother in tennis? Yeah, he's he's still a scrawny little kid. He might be good at bridge, but I can still dominate him in physical sports. <laughs> um, how much bridge do you play? Uh, well, I used to be like really like way too much bridge every day, so. Yeah. I I especially now since I'm a junior, I've cut a lot of it back. So now I've only I'm doing a uh, USBF training once a week and I'm doing a a separate training with David Berkowitz once a week and I'm also teaching if that counts like twice or three times depending on the week and um Sometimes I play Saturday with, uh, like Tom. I mean, with Jenny or with, like another lo or with a, a local expert. And how much? I mean, like how? Like, do you do you do you love it? Uh yeah, I I can't get enough of the game. But really? Yeah, I mean. I, I just think it's thrilling. I, I love to think about it, and it makes I, – I think it makes me better. I I know before I started – okay. I, oh, no. I, I, can't, I can't believe I'm going to reveal this, but <laughs> dur during COVID, I had the worst sportsmanship ever. And oh, wow. We, we would – like, especially in tennis, I would, like, rage really bad. And one time, I actually destroyed one of my rackets. Oh, my God. But – but there's this. But playing bridge with my dad during COVID and us screaming at each other during the postmortems kind yeah. of uh, brought brought me back. And when I realized I was not as good as I thought I was as a bridge player, mm. I I kind of uh, everything kind of just was better. And I think I improved a lot as a person because of bridge. Okay, so uh, I I guess we'll we'll start from the beginning of the World Youth Championships. So. I I just I I was just uh humiliated by mother, for, no by I was, I, well my mom just like this was just when my mom exposed me, and uh was trying to get that article with Amy Casanova, right and which she did your mom was successful yeah that, by the way and I I was very appreciative okay at the time <laughs> I thought it was humiliation but not anymore but uh. So we just arrived to the World Youth Championships and 
still pretty nervous. So, um, both your parents also went with you. Yeah. Okay. My mom mostly it's in, for vacation. it's in the Netherlands. Uh, it's in the Netherlands. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I, no, you, you didn't do anything wrong. I'm just giving context for people that, that don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, my dad was actually for the first few days not there, so my mom was just babysitting us, and uh, I I already had like a stomach bug from uh, the ending of Chicago. I was I was throwing up like during the the last few days, and mm. it didn't get. It actually got worse in uh, the Netherlands for the first few days. So I started throwing up in the in pairs and. I just played absolutely horrible, and I was like, I need to change this. So the next event was a pretty big one, the U21 pairs, and uh, there was pretty tough competition. Michael and Olivia were also there. And like, I was just like, whatever, I'm feeling sick every day, and that morning I'd already thrown up. I'm like, I'll just give it my best shot, and somehow, after the first session, everybody kept giving us free boards, and we ended up in first. We were not like the first American pair. We, we, we're not just ahead of Olivia and Michael. We were ahead of everybody in the field. <laughs> and, and I was like amazed. And I was like, this is not never going to hold up. So I was just like telling everybody, let's go. We are the top American pair because that's all I wanted to be. I, I, all I had to have was bragging rights over Michael and Olivia. <laughs> and thankfully, we continued our winning streak for like the second and third sessions. I think we fell to like fourth maybe on the third session, but we were still yeah. holding pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, I think at that point, Michael and Olivia may have surpassed us, but I'm, I'm not completely <laughs> sure. I have to check the results. And... uh. Oh, sorry. No, we were still leading after the first day. And the second day, again, same. I still was feeling very, very bad. This is a three-day event, so yeah. this is a second qualifying day. And somehow, I still ended up, like, even when I made a mistake, people just kept giving me free gifts. <laughs> so, again, we were maintained our first after four sessions. In the wow. first session, we were actually holding strong at a strong 69%. Oh, my God. So, yeah. It was it was pretty amazing that we were still first after four sessions. And I, I just, I couldn't, I was like, I like immediately was like sleeping at the table. Like, I, I was just <laughs> that sick. But all, 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 all I remember from that was Sam and Michael, like, uh, okay, so this is another pair they're from the USA. They're from the USA too, and got silver in the World yeah. Youth Championships. Right. Uh, they walked up to me and they 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 were like laughing and they were like telling me how, uh, the people that were, uh Simon Cope, so Simon Cope's son, Andrew Cope, and his. Oh, he's not related to Simon. I think actually. Oh. I've asked, I asked him about it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, there was like an Andrew <laughs> Andrew Cope and some other person. Yeah. They were like pretty yeah. well known there, and they're 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 like. And they were like, you know, these Nathan and Arthur, you know, Nathan's throwing up every day and yet they're still in first. And, <laughs> and I was like, I was happy that I had that street cred and I was staying strong. <laughs> Unfortunately, that didn't last every day. And at the end, we were like uh, 11th. So it was okay, but we, we could not say that we were the first American pair anymore. 11th and that's pretty good though, isn't it? Uh, that. It was. You feel like you should have done better. Yeah. 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 Did you think you're gonna win on the third day at all? I think on the third day we were like fourth or something. So I think we had some chances, but on ironically, when I felt better the last session, everybody kept <laughs> playing good bridge. Like, <laughs> like the Andrew Cope I was talking about found this amazing sacrifice after almost hitting us in four spades in six hearts <laughs> to get like a. <laughs> against us so <laughs> uh, what's it like when you talk with your brother arthur about bridge well uh, arthur knows a lot about bridge like he never forgets anything so usually it's a little one-sided unfortunately so he he can't like 
I just ask him like what he thinks happened, like if if I did anything wrong or anything, and then he'll he'll just let me know like what he's thinking and uh yeah usually we just if we have like a bad decision we don't talk about it so unfortunately we don't have lots of post morums as a partnership um good sessions we're just like let's go let's go celebrate and then we just end it there but you you don't argue with him about like uh stuff oh no don't get me wrong sometimes i think he's extremely crazy and his <laughs> actions make no sense but <laughs> After like long discussions and uh, talks, we st we can always sort it out, and we do sleep in like the same room for like bridge events. So uh, it, it's we still have to work it out eventually. Can you still beat him up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thankfully. Um, what kind of questions are your students uh, asking you that are wanting to post more on these boards? Uh, well, like, what's a recent question they asked you? Well, the, they're getting pretty into it, so we've we've covered a lot now. So they're asking pretty advanced questions. So, like, they're talking about they're asking about cases for unusual to no Trump. Like, they're talking about specific uses for conventions, and they're talking about like uh, continuations of two over one. We describe parts of that, but they ask like really specific and really thoughtful questions which I was mm. very impressed by. Mm. And these are, these are your peers? Like these are kids that are, your, are in your grade at, at school? Or? Um, they're like Arthur's grade. Mm. And how do you get them to come to the, like what, what is it that you're, you know, getting them to come, like to start out? What's, the, what's your pitch to get them to start out? Well, uh, I, ju I just say, like, you know, Bridge is this fun game. You can meet a bunch of celebrities, and some Celebrity. sometimes I show them, like, double dummy. But, uh, you know, per parents, I've actually, like, me and my dad have found are, like, a really, really strong driving factor because kids often listen to their parents. Well, here. Yeah. So my, if you can convince the parents, you can convince the kid. But you're like, it, I mean, it, and in this article in the Bridge Bullets, and it said that you're like, Bridge is, is a big part of your life. So, you know, you're like, people are just kind of, are people asking you about Bridge a lot? Like you're like, like your, your classmates? So, uh, unfortunately, they all think it's this old person card game. And I, I've convinced some of my nerdy friends to uh, <laughs> s to learn. They've learned the card game, and they've like, but they everybody at our school kind of has a lot of things on their plate. Uh, we're like a college preparatory school, so yeah, uh, it gets busy sometimes. So they haven't really gone into like the game. They they're pretty mm -hmm. interested, but they're saying like down the road they might do more stuff, but. Overall, in general, with all my classmates, like, they kind of know because it's like, like, whenever we have to talk about personal stuff, I just, like, <laughs> I can default to bridge. <laughs> and so my d identity at school is, like, it's either, like, my math or it's, like, my bridge. And, yeah. And your dad's a math teacher at Eastside, isn't that right? Uh, he, he was a math teacher at a university prep, which is a another college prep school but right now he's uh figuring some things out i think he might come over but i don't know mm, okay some 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 employment scuttlebutt <laughs> here on the, on the podcast uh what uh what about college where do you think you want to go to college uh so I, I know you're leaning towards UVA. Be, no, 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 no. Just, just be honest with me. Like, just tell me straight. Like, I, I, I want you, you know, I, I want to hear what you're thinking. Well, uh, okay, I'll say this is mainly, this is strongly influenced by my parents since I don't really know what's the difference between colleges and, you know, whatever our co the college reps say, like, sways me. So, yeah. Uh, right now, I've been looking at a uh, U Chicago since that representative was really cool, and 
I've been looking at uh, like Warden and some of the other Ivy business schools because I want to study like financial math. I want to study like finance and math, like financial mathematics. And yeah. I want to do something, something similar to your career. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so doesn't UVA have a really good undergraduate business program? I, I I have not actually l- looked at the UBA uh business program. I'm I'm gonna be honest. So uh but uh I, I, I will consider it. I will I will look at it. Do you like basketball? Uh no nah, kind of. No. We have a really good basketball team. I was gonna say you could come so when I when I was growing up, like I went to a boarding school. Mm-hmm you know, college prep boarding school. And my, one of my best friends went to UVA who was a year older than me. Uh And I used to come and hang out with him at UVA and I had the best time. And that's how that and being a UVA sports fan was how I, how I, you know, kind of had to, had to come here, but it's far, you know, you're, you're in Seattle, you're on the other side of the country. Location doesn't matter as long as the education is good. Well, what would it take to get you to come to Charlottesville during school, like during the school year, to 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 see UVA and just get a taste for it? You would, uh, you would need to convince my parents. That that okay. is the key limiting factor in this equation. Okay, so your mom. I should probably talk to your mom <laughs> in Atlanta. That maybe offer to maybe maybe pay for the plane ticket. That might work. That would really be talking. We get get you to stay with some somebody from the Bridge Club. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Mm. Did your where did your where did your parents go to school? Um. So, well, my dad went to a Chinese university, Tsinghua. So, and then he went to, uh, and then his applicant he did not know how to apply to colleges here, so he went to Boston University for a geography degree out of all degrees <laughs> and <laughs> that was uh not great did he go for four years i i believe he like went for like three years and then uh i i don't think i can go to any other details about what happened but he, he i think he secured a degree at the end and my mom uh <laughs> My mom's path was a little bit more straightforward, and he, she went to a uh, university. Oh wait, no, she went to University of Maryland for a computer science degree. Oh, oh, that's uh, that's like uh, that's one of our rivals. It's one of EVA's rivals. Unfortunate. They're not in the ACC anymore, though, so we don't really play them in sports. But they used to be. Uh, we always would play them ah. uh, in football and basketball, and they've got a pretty good basketball basketball team. Mm. <laughs> okay, so actually, I have I have a really funny story about uh what ha- what happened at the end to secure our uh, silver medal. So okay, um, I guess we'll start we'll start from uh the ending of the the knockouts. So we just had lost to uh USA two, which was a uh, pretty crushing loss i would say pretty bad loss to pretty sad loss to usa2 we were uh tossed around for a couple of quarters and uh we almost made a comeback our our team without me and arthur almost staged it it was really really close at the end nail biting but unfortunately we couldn't get it done so we're just playing in this uh open constellation like type Bam, and first, first we sit down and we're playing the first segment because uh, half like parts of our team is just really tired. So uh, we start the first segment, and the boards are kind of flat, boring-ish. But we sit down. We first sit down to USA two U twenty six, which is, and our screenmates are Brent and Richard. Like I've. I, this is these are like people I've been looking at at the bridge world like this is the people from the movie like I was very <laughs> surprised and pretty nervous to play people like that so it was uh not not a great start 
But <laughs> thankfully, uh, yeah, so we had like an average-ish game, and our teammates also brought in okay results, but nothing very inspiring. Just like a, we were not going to qualify with what we were at at that point. So second session, I was feeling pretty sick again. So I decided, <laughs> you know what, I'll just sit out. The, and then after the second session, uh, just it was shocking because Arthur decided to play. I, I forgot to mention that. And Arthur was <laughs> playing with like, I forgot. It, it was like Harrison, I think. And Bruce was playing with Michael because we were just mixing it up because we didn't think we were yeah. going to qualify. And Arthur and Harrison and Michael and Bruce bring back a pretty good card. And now we are in contention to go in for the for the qualification for the final day and we're pretty excited but i was like you know i'm not gonna screw up our chances for qualifying i don't want the blame on me so i i just i was like arthur how about you take another session so now arthur decides to play with uh bruce and harrison decides to chill with me so and michael is playing with olivia so me and harrison are chilling we're having a blast. Like I'm beating him up. Nah, okay. I I can't I can't say that Harrison's gonna expose me. But uh, <laughs> we we play some ping pong and we play some chess. And I can say I beat him up in chess. This like eighteen hundred in chess dot com. <laughs> and uh, he's eighteen hundred in chess dot com. Yeah, but he, he sometimes he plays like a eight hundred. I'm not gonna lie. I I, beat him <laughs> up. Uh, I don't. I don't really. What's your rating? I don't have. I don't really have an Elo on Chess.com. I played like three games, but I'm like hmm. 1200 Chess.com and 1200 face to face. You've played in real chess tournaments. Yeah. This was like again with the grandmaster yeah. that I was talking about before, but. Yeah. Um. What were we? T- what were we talking about? The okay. Bam. Yeah. The bam. Sorry, the bam. So, w- we were like feeling good and. We just walk back and we're like expecting nothing, me and Harrison. And what happens is Arthur and Bruce are beyond joy. They're like absolutely (laughs) ecstatic. And I'm like very confused. Like what happened? And I hear that they got like a 95% game. We had like a 23 out of 25 or something ridiculous. Oh my God. We did not lose a single board in those wow. 26 boards. So Wow, that's amazing. We, we came home like with like a fifth. And we were just absolutely <laughs> so happy. So we're like, screw these regular partnerships. I'm playing with Harrison. <laughs> Arthur's playing with Bruce. <laughs> so uh come final day arthur and bruce just have a they they i i don't know how their game went but i think it was really really good because uh we were just like fourth like we we're like first fourth second and third like throughout the day like nothing else like it didn't matter who was who was on as long as arthur and bruce I think Arthur and Bruce were playing the entire time, and yeah. Michael and Olivia were bringing us in the first and second. They were doing really well. I was feeling again, again pretty sick, so I sat out. It was just. Are you better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I, I did recover after that, <laughs> but I, I was still feeling pretty bad. So uh, they played the first two, and we were like first by like barely anything so yeah now me and harrison have to bring it home with arthur and bruce so thankfully we did uh pretty good we had uh two tough losses which uh unfortunately cost us the first place but Mm. we were 0.5 away and Mm. I, i i would like to say like afterwards we were like too nervous to even talk and like all all i remember from that was like we finished, we compared, and we were either first or second. And second, first was ahead of us by, like, a whole board. So mm. we were not expecting to win. Mm. But then we were, I was playing squash with, like, some of the other people. and Squash? Yeah, they, they had, like, some squash court for some reason. So we rented it out, and we played some squash. And suddenly, uh, Sam, again, from that team, and Ramon just – walk up they just suddenly in the middle of our squash match just tell me oh 
did you know you might be getting first place by 0.5 of a board? And I was, no, 0.5 points, which was like a eighth of a board. And I was like, wow, it, this cannot be happening. I'm getting punked here. <laughs> and, and sure enough, it was real. But uh, unfortunately, they, they adjusted it to a half score. They rigged it. For, so we lost by 0.7. So, oh man, yeah, so you, got, you got the second. silver medal. Yeah. Would you have been able to get a star on BBO if you got the <laughs> the gold medal? I don't know. I, I <laughs> <laughs> honestly, maybe. <laughs> Would you have found out if you got the gold medal? Would you have looked into it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I would have been able. To, I, I might have <laughs> actually looked into it. <laughs> oh, oh. hmm. How close did it get in the in the quarterfinal loss to USA too? Because you guys, you you made up a ton of imps in the fourth quarter. How 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 close? What was the closest it was in the uh, in the fourth quarter? Can you you can't? Uh, I I like. Because you were down a ton. You were down like eighty imps, I think, and almost made it back. Yeah, I, which I, is unbelievable. I can't. I I I don't remember. I'm not gonna lie. It it was like within ten, I think. But mm. I, I don't want to slander USA too because they're also really good friends of me. Like I know I'm really good friends with most of the members, and I also really don't want to slander our team. So I'm just gonna say it was ten. But I'm not I'm not sure. Have you ever been to Serious Pie? Serious Pie. Yeah. What's that? In Seattle. No. Pizza place. Oh, one of my favorite pizza places is in, is in Seattle. What? How, yeah. how have I never been here? It's downtown. There's two locations, I think. But there's a downtown location called Serious Pie where when we went out there, when we were filming Double Dummy, uh, we interviewed Phil Gordon out there. Does he ever come to the oh. Bridge Club? <laughs> the poker player? No, I, I, I haven't seen him. Um, and we stayed. Uh, Matt Colt now, the director. Yeah. He told me, he said, you got to go to Serious Pie. And I went there twice. We were there for like two nights. I went there twice yeah. in, the, in, in the time that we were there. Damn. Yeah. Now I have to check it out now. For sure. How have I never heard of this? Oh, my God. My mom has been scamming me. And Matt. I can't believe Matt has never told me about this place. I mean, I fell in love with Neapolitan pizza. I love Neapolitan pizza. And it was because of Serious Pie. What? I, okay, yeah. I love Neapolitan pizza. Like, you do? Okay, it, okay, but th this is mainly because my mom like only took me to Neapolitan places when we were in New York. Like, it was there. Was, okay, there was an exception of Prince Street, but besides that, it was like uh, Giuliana's. It was uh, I I can't remember. Giordano's? Huh? Giordano's. Oh yeah, yeah, Giordano's and uh, that other place. I, I'll remember it. All right, you got to go there. You got to go there, stat. Okay, okay. Riz some people. Riz your mom. <laughs> no, up. no, 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 no. <laughs> Riz your mom up. Get her to take you to Serious Pie. Get some Neapolitan pizza. I want to hear about it. And then we're gonna get you to Charlottesville. Um, who are you? You don't even know who you're playing with in Atlanta. Um, it's def I I definitely have a partner. I just don't know who it is. Right. Who's your partner in the USBF junior program right it's now? It's between like three people. So it's uh, Arthur. That's like that solid partnership that we do. And I've been trying to practice more with uh, Avery Silverstein. So she also took silver in the U16s. And her father's Aaron Silverstein. Yeah, I know. I know. I've known Avery for a long time, actually. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah, cause she's also in that area. Well, I mean, I just I was friends with her parents. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it's been really cool to see her uh, take up the game. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, and the third one is uh, Nicole, which I talked about before. Who was on the Rona team? Right. Um. What is the USBF junior program like in full swing right now? Um, so, okay. So Cause it was, it was not, it was not going on for a while. Wasn't it? Um, it was under like Alex's leadership and I think it was 
still run pretty well and there was still like stuff going on and but I I'm pretty fortunate to not have to deal with most of the reorganization and stuff because like we're just in a structured one on one ki type of thing. So besides like with Roger Lee, like when he was captaining NPCing our uh U twenty one team, our our USBF has mainly just been with Aaron and I kind of actually set up the group. So it was like almost it was like part of the USBF under the guise of it, but it was under it was a little bit separate from the main like reorganization stuff. So we mm. were more independent and we could we have our own Discord and we could do our own stuff at our own time. So Aaron is your mentor? Uh yeah, for for now at least. But yeah, probably for all of it. How's it go when he and Avery have like a disagreement about something? Well, uh, Avery kind of just defers to Aaron. So Avery will just say, okay. He'll just say like, okay, Aaron Silverstein or something. Kind of snarky. <laughs> at, back, back, back at his dad. At her dad, sorry. And um, yeah. We, we also <laughs> considered uh, Tom, which is an amazing mentor, by the way. Tom Carmichael. But... Yeah. I didn't want to like steal him away from like his his already his many commitments, so I just didn't ask him. Didn't you play in the Soloway with Tom and Jenny last year? Uh, it uh, we play you like regional events together, but. I don't in Phoenix in the Phoenix NABC didn't you play the solo with them? I, I played with uh, Tom, but Jenny was directing. The, I think she was directing oh. the solo. Way. I was. Tom had. Uh, Tom had no. This this was uh, the solo way was not with me actually. I actually already flew home for school work, but Arthur and Tom, they were like finding teammates, and fortunately they stumbled. Uh, they. Okay, it wouldn't be stumbled, but they were asked by uh, Radu Nister, and I don't know how to say uh, Nister's first name, but yeah. <laughs> Radu. No, Radu. Oh, sorry, yeah. Radu Nister and uh, Rotaru. Sorry, I don't know Rotaru's. Oh, Max. Oh, yeah, Max, right. Everybody calls him Max. Right. Oh, that's pretty good teammates. Yeah. So they qualified. Yeah, for sure. And, oh, I think they might have had, like, another pair as well. Uh, Ray Miller and somebody else. Okay, um, man, what was your James Holzhauer interview? Oh, so uh, this this was another uh thing that was encouraged by my parents, thankfully. But uh, so Jenny is like good friends with James, and Jenny Carmichael's good friends yeah, with Jenny James Holzhauer. Carmichael. Yeah. So uh. I like told her, but I also just directly emailed James and he replied back in a few days, which was pretty cool. And yeah, we set it up. But you like, where is this interview available? Uh, I, okay. So I kind of messed up the recording because <laughs> it, it only had James's face. Cause he was like pinned cause there was multiple people in the call. So okay. it's only James responding to questions and hearing <laughs> questions and his reactions so we haven't actually published it maybe i'll like uh edit it and put a send a video what is it like when you uh when you tell people that james holzhauer plays bridge when you're telling like your contemporaries yeah unfortunately it's half like half the people i talk to don't know who james holzhauer is <laughs> so it, it like doesn't even land but like <laughs> The the other half are like super impressed because they're <laughs> they're like freaking out over it. But uh, usually I just show them the picture I have with Bill Gates and that works. So. Hey, does Bill Gates play bridge at the at a club in Seattle? Oh uh, no! I just I just stumbled him in stumbled across him in like Phoenix or something. It was one of the NABCs, and I just got a photo with him. There was Avery and uh, Jack in the background as well. If you could teach one, like person in the world, 
Bridge, who would it be? Um, I think I would teach my mom Bridge and have, have her actually learn the game. That way, mm. she'll know how good it is, and then we can have a family team, and we could have so many things as a four-player group in our family. Who's the best? Uh, who's the best uh, bridge-playing family? Oh no, I'm I'm gonna like get called out for this if I don't say the right names. But uh, <laughs> I, come on, rank me some bridge-playing families. Okay, I only know like three. So all right, we'll rank them. Okay, I, okay. Number one, sorry. Okay, that's not true. Number one has to be the Rimsteads. They have to, like, they they have okay. like so many connections. And isn't like, isn't like Kevin Dwyer also part of that? He's married yeah. to uh, to uh, Cecilia. Yeah, Rimstead, right. Yeah. So okay, th- Rimsteads one. Okay. Gongs two. No, I I can't be two. I have to be like bottom of the list. Okay, All right, number some more. number two has to be uh. Okay, when you say bridge playing families, do they have to be three or more or? I don't know, man. It's your it's your list. Cause like if if you count marriages, like there's so many marriages that are technically families. Okay, well it's your list. <sighs> okay, I guess number two would have to be. I can't think of any family. Okay, I'll just I'll just say the Silversteins because. <laughs> Aaron is just too good, and Avery is also <laughs> very good. So, <laughs> and then I, I guess I'll, I'll put myself and I'll get. I guess I'll put the gongs at number three because I can't think <laughs> of anybody else. Um, how did you get? You said you're in a group with David Berkowitz. What's up? What's that? Oh shoot! David Berkowitz is number one for sure. Sorry, <laughs> I completely forgot there was a British <laughs> family. I knew I was forgetting somebody. Okay, okay, but uh. So, this was actually because uh, Ber- David Berkowitz was one of the uh, was one of the partnership coaches. So, he he got to train us pre World Youth Championship, and yeah. thankfully he's not sick of us yet. So, so you just have like a standing. When when do you meet with David? Um, I usually it's Sundays on like. At like six, but um, sometimes it will change depending on schedules. And and who are, who else is in the group? Uh, usually I play with my brother, but I can I usually I sometimes get like other people on. So like Nicole or Avery or some other person, and um, we usually play against uh, Olivia Sh- and uh. Brian. Sherson? Yeah. And Brian Zhang? Yeah. And then David just kibitzes and... Yeah, and he just goes over hands and walks us like, through stuff. Like, how does it work? Does he stop, like, after a hand and you go through the hand? Or do you play, like, a set of boards and then he goes over it afterwards? Okay, so his style is kind of unique. And it gives off a lot of UI. But he's, like, after a card is played, he's, like... Oh, maybe that may have not been your best choice or something. And um, <laughs> uh, you sometimes we'll just pretend not to listen, but sometimes I can't resist when it's like a double slam to just beat the contract from that information. <laughs> uh, when do you think you're like? When do you think you realize that your brother was better than you are? Unfortunately, this was like uh, I I I I I would say like there I I kind of like always thought of him better than me, and he was like what I was trying to aspire to be like at the goal for levels. Because whenever I was improving, he was improving, and mm. he was already like this superstar when he was playing with my dad. Like he, my dad wasn't lying when he said my brother was a prodigy <laughs> at 2018. Like. <laughs> They were they were winning like B flights all the time for regionals and <laughs> it like I I'll just say like when when uh Tom and Jenny first met us two like seriously for a bridge like they were like super impressed by Arthur and <laughs> I was like too nervous to 
I was too nervous, and I kept trying to like, uh, to I, I I thought they would think I was a really bad player and not want to teach me. So I kept like pretending like I wasn't taking it seriously, which, uh, I, I'm not gonna lie, kind of backfired. Because <laughs> since they thought they, they thought I was they thought I was not uh, valuing their time, but uh, <laughs> thankfully it all worked out. But uh, also, but yeah. So Arthur's just always it, it's clear to most people that know us and play with us that Arthur's just a lot stronger. And I I've known this since I started, and I think I'll know this until. Uh, one of us finish it stops playing bridge I think that would I don't have any I just have I have three sisters but I think it would be really hard to have a younger brother that's better than me in something like I'm I'm pretty competitive like in sports and in bridge like I can't imagine what that would that, that would be like I think it's I think it takes like a lot it says a lot about you and about bridge that you still like that you that you keep at it you know like you. And that you still play I mean, I he's he's just really good at a lot of things. So, and unfortunately, with him, I can't like some in some things. I just can't like c compete. Like he's also a math whiz. Like there's this in you, um, there's this thing called the USMO, which is the United States, uh, like na it's the national math competition. If you yeah, if you do well in this. You make the like the U.S. math team, and you can okay. just compete and represent U.S. in the International Math Olympiad, which is okay. the most prestigious event in math for juniors. And in his, I I kid you not, like in like eighth, okay, so last year in eighth grade, he was one problem short. He literally answered the bubbles wrong, or else he would have been in the. United States wow. American Math Olympiad competing wow. for a spot on the team. Like that's the top 200 math elites. Wow. So, so do your parents like shine him up and sort of like <laughs> not think about you so much? Thankfully my parents are uh, very chill and very nice. So they, they, they like hold us to like, they always try to uplift both of us at the same time. And I, I'm like, and I'm more <laughs> like, a, I have like, I talk more than him and you know, I'm more active in yeah. like social You're more social than yeah. he is. I'm so more socially active than he is, so we focus on like different parts of our life and mm. aspects of our person. Uh what else? What else? What else? What else? Um have you have you watched it have you listened to a fair amount of uh the setting trick interviews? I, I can tell you my dad is a big fan. But uh Oh really? Yeah. He he was like watching all of them and he was like telling me, you know, you gotta listen to all of these podcasts. These are all like so good. Did you know this about Tom and Jenny? And I <laughs> and I, I, I will be honest, I'm not I, I'm also really uh a fan, but I'm not as obsessed as he is. So <laughs> I, I've watched some episodes. But I will admit I have not watched all of them, and I did not actually know how many you how many episodes you had until I uh, looked today. We gotta have dinner uh, in Atlanta with uh, the Gong family. Yeah, I wanna, yeah. I want to have dinner with the Gong family in Atlanta. Get to know uh, get to know your mom and your dad a little bit. Sounds good. Um, and you know, rush, talk them up about talk talk UVA up to them. <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> so are you better than Kalita? We're gonna bring that back. Kalita. Yeah, Yatsa Kalita. Wait, wh Polish multiple world champion. <laughs> Wait, what is this? That from? was a, that that was a, that was a, that was a that was a that was a question that I was doing for a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> it came from Mexroth. I was interviewing Mexroth, and uh, I asked him if he was better than Kalita, and so then I started asking everybody that. I, 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 I unfortunately I do not think at this time I'm better than uh Kalia. Yeah, I I knew I knew you what you were saying, but uh <laughs> Yeah. I, oh I, I will tell you, I did actually oh I don't know if it was Kalita, but it was uh I played Zimmerman and his partner with 
uh, Tom Carmichael at the uh, some some open pairs event. It was like it was like the Silidor open, and this this we were I was just trolling around because I did not think we were doing I was we we're doing so good. So uh, I I just I made this really bad overcall and. Uh, afterwards, in the post mortem, both Tom and Jenny uh, t <laughs> like were very, very disappointed in me. But it like worked wonders against them, and we got, <laughs> we, we got a good board. <laughs> what's your uh, what's like the best bridge prank that you've ever uh, ever heard? You got any good bridge pranks? When you, what do you mean by bridge pranks? I don't know, like something that somebody, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's a bad question. No, 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 no. Wait. Okay. I, actually, I have a, I, I have, I have something that I remember. Okay. But, but this is not really a prank. More of a okay. me accidentally punking somebody at the at the bridge <laughs> table. Okay. This was a really, really long time ago. I think this was like five or six years ago. It might have even been seven when I was like, yeah. I really didn't know anything about bridge. Yeah. All I was th all I knew was like preempts. So I I I hold <laughs> six clubs and some random po hand that I was like, "Oh, maybe I can preempt two clubs." So <laughs> so so the auction went two clubs, pass, two diamonds, pass, pass, pass. And this was like at like 8 p.m. and my dad was like telling me to drink coffee. So I'm like, "Whatever." So I just like fell asleep <laughs> after that two diamonds. But <laughs> All I know was it went down four and I was depressed. I was like, oh my God, why did I bid two clubs? Because I realized afterwards that two diamonds was forced. And like, yeah. I, I like, my brother brought it up because I was like confused why he pa didn't just pass my preempt. And, and then I was like, oh shoot, I showed 22 points. And then my dad, my dad and my brother were like, don't worry, don't worry. They had slam. And they had the diamond <laughs> fit, so uh, two hundred was a cold top. That's illegal, you know. That's like you can't, you can't psych a two club. Uh, you can't psych an artificial opening, I think. But anyway, it sounds like you didn't get caught. Yeah, I'll, I'll just pretend that. Uh, I, I, would, I mean, it was technically a mistake, so I don't think it was a. It was a psych. Right? But uh, if if you gotta put me in Bridge Jail, I, I I understand. You can turn me in. Oh. Um. All right. Well, uh, I am. I am grateful for what you're doing with, uh, you know, getting your friends and their parents playing bridge. I realized we didn't really talk about that that much, though. So. Actually, in in a uh, middle school, uh, I started a. Uh, I started bridge club as well with my dad and uh, that yeah. was really good for me. And this was when I was just starting bridge. So I just want, I just wanted to share the game. And yeah. thankfully we had the help of uh, two amazing volunteers. So obviously Al Bender, which we talked about a bit before and yeah. uh, Allison Welsh. And uh, I think they're still holding strong there. And then, uh, I also started a high school bridge club and uh, it started with like just a bunch of my nerdy friends and we would just and uh, we would just play cards shuffle and I, I would just give everybody a little bit of advice and get them hooked unfortunately uh, surprisingly actually a lot of them wanted to learn about the game more so I kind of regret not teaching them a bit more now that they're gone but uh, I I still I still I still get uh, references to the bridge game that we've had. So, cause this one person missed a grand slam and only went to five clubs, and I was his partner. So whenever I see him and he talks about like disappointing stuff, like I would, he would just like bring it up. You'd be like, oh man, this is like that grand slam, or any of <laughs> anybody else at the table. They'd just be like, oh, you know, you know, you know this, you know about this kid. You know, at least I didn't make, miss grand slam. I'm never gonna, f and at least I'll never get to this grand slam unlike this person. So, <laughs> oh. I don't understand how you can be an Eagles fan. Who's your team? Uh, okay, we don't talk about it because the Seahawks, 
Our, our, okay, we, we don't we don't talk about it. But uh, yeah, um, Seahawks. I'm, I'm an Eagles fan because I was born in Philadelphia. But what what about all your loyalties to Virginia? Who should I be a fan of? Uh, that's a good question. I would say you should stick to college football. And for 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 uh for outside of college football, you can you can uh support the Giants. That way you <laughs> What's your favorite sports team? Um I would say it's probably the Seahawks, but unfortunately that's that's not holding strong for me. So maybe, maybe What's the Seahawks record right now? It's like 3 and 2. That's not ter- that's not terrible. We're we're like second in we're like second in our like mini AFC conference, but I I I would hope it's not been good since we lost to Russell Wilson. And I I, I will say that my foot my uh soccer team football team has been doing even worse. So is that Seattle also? No. Uh. 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 Well, yeah, I support the Sounders, but. I was talking about like the Premier League and uh. in England. Uh, I support Chelsea, and unfortunately, uh, Z- Zia supports the two two of my biggest enemies and my grandpa, and both of them are doing significantly better than I am. So, not good. Um, what was I gonna say? I was actually a Seahawks fan when I was a kid. Oh, what? Yeah, back when they had Dave Craig, Kurt Warner. Uh, Steve Largent, Bo- Brian Bosworth. Yeah, like a long time ago, 80s, I, mid-80s. I was a Seahawks fan. I don't know why I was a Seahawks fan. You should have kept but, that up. Uh, no, nah, I dropped him. <laughs> uh, yeah, my grandmother was an Eagles fan. was born in Philadelphia, and I'm a Sixers and Phillies fan, so I just – how about them Phillies? Fair enough. I will say this is this is this is less disappointing than my uh my history teacher who I I will say is both an Eagles fan and uh was that like not Mets what's that other team Yankees, Yankees fan like oh my god oh my I, I don't even own, understand impossible. how that works like this this person. I, I will I will not mention names because I I don't I I won't call this person out but uh very disappointing. Do you have good grades? Uh, what do you think? I'm Asian. Come on now, I have to have good grades. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Do you have like a four zero? Uh, uh, uh. You have higher than a four zero because of waypoints, right? Uh, uh, no, we are we don't have we have a max four zero at our school. With waiting, but you, uh, you don't. But you don't have. You don't have. You don't have. Okay, look, I have a three nine five, and <laughs> have you taken the SAT or ACT? Um, I'm gonna take the SAT in uh, December. All right, you'll have to let us know how you're doing. Though. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. We're gonna get you to Charlottesville. We're gonna have dinner in Atlanta. Sounds good. And I'll let you know when we got uh, if we can make something of this. All right, sounds good. All right. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Thank you so much. Good to see you, man. Thanks, John. Appreciate what you're doing. Thank you.